for the planet has an elliptical orbit. The Sun appears larger when Mercury swings close, far away, and it's half the size. The result on the planet is a double sunrise. Proximity of the Sun means Mercury is hot. At midday on the equator, it can hit 810 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet has a temperature range of nearly 1100 degrees, the greatest in the solar system. At midnight on the dark side, it can be as cold as minus 270. With a diameter of just under 3000 miles, Mercury is the smallest of the inner planets. It has an atmosphere so rarefied as to barely exist. A magnetic field just 1% of Earth's. Venus, the veiled planet. Venus, choked in smog, a crushing atmosphere of carbon dioxide. Venus, shaped by volcanoes. Venus, where day and night, it's always 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet no sun ever penetrates these poisonous skies. Venus is a puzzle. It rotates just once in 243 days, yet clouds race around the planet in four. And with a diameter of more than 7,500 miles, Venus is almost the size of Earth. But few twins are so different. Once, Venus may have been like Earth, with oceans, continents, and clear blue skies. So what befell this unhappy world? What clouded its face? The unveiling of Venus begins with radar. Astronomers have their first image of the surface, and with it, the discovery that Venus rotates backwards. In 1966, and the Soviet Union starts sending landers through the clouds, the Venera missions. They detect an atmosphere 90 times denser than Earth's. Several craft are crushed. But a soft lander grabs these pictures. These are fractured slabs of lava. It seems Venus is massively volcanic. The images are beamed to Earth moments before the cameras frazzle, for machines don't survive here much less human beings. If we ever reached the surface, we'd be instantly crushed. And to add to the horror, the upper clouds are bathed in sulfuric acid. Venus, rendered on computer. Heights are exaggerated and color guessed at, but otherwise the features are accurate. Three impact craters, rare on Venus, because only the biggest space rocks make it to the surface. The rest vaporize in the super-dense atmosphere. Volcanoes with radiating lava flows. Cleopatra crater, its rim breached by lava. Everywhere, evidence of volcanic activity. Volcanoes have belched here for possibly billions of years. No one knows why. And eruptions may still occur, their sulfur adding to the toxic atmosphere.
lava relays the surface time and time again. Many parts only solidify within the past half billion years. And despite the volcanoes, Venus is remarkably flat, like an ocean bed smoothed by the motion of currents. Here, the Venusian winds have carried ash from a volcanic dome. These upwellings of lava seem squashed by the sheer weight of the atmosphere. Pancakes in a barrel of syrup. Deeper inside, Venus is rather like Earth. Same density, same crust, same mantle, same core. The core is solid, probably a mix of nickel and iron. But unlike Earth, there's no molten outer core. As a result, the Venus of today has little or no magnetic field. Mars, Earth, and Venus mark out the habitable zone of the solar system. Venus, closer to the sun, is at the zone's inner edge. But did it once have water, oceans, and continents? Billions of years ago, it may have been this way. One theory is that the sun, much closer and hotter than on Earth, slowly evaporates the seas. Water vapor fills the upper atmosphere. There, it's split by the heat of the sun. Hydrogen leaks into space. With carbon dioxide released from the oceans, the atmosphere thickens. Heat can't escape. There's a runaway greenhouse effect. Venus is trapped in a giant pressure cooker. In the ferment of the early solar system, Earth has neither life nor water. It's a molten rock. Four and a half billion years later, and the heaviest elements have sunk to the center. The inner core is solid iron and nickel. Around it is the molten outer core. Around that, the mantle. Earth's magnetic field and its wandering north pole are caused by the solid inner core sloshing about in the molten outer core. As the toxic gases of our early atmosphere condense, rain starts to fall. Pools become lakes, lakes become oceans. Today, they cover 70% of the planet. They lock up carbon dioxide, bequeathing us an atmosphere one-fifth oxygen, four-fifths nitrogen. And other forces are at work. By night, the stars seem to travel across the heavens, but it's an illusion. It's the effect of Earth spinning on its axis, a 24-hour rotation that gives us day and night. It's the same with the sun. As its shadow creeps across a dial, the sun isn't moving, it's the Earth. Day and night would always be the same length if the axis of our planet weren't tilted 23 degrees from the vertical.